The team behind Open Interpreter, the open source project that allowed you to control your computer using natural language, everything from opening folders to checking your email, creating videos, everything, has just dropped the O1 Lite, which is an open source hardware device that allows you to control any computer. And this is, in my opinion, the future of computing, direct natural language to compute. This is an open source competitor to Rabbit, to the AI pin, and it's extremely exciting. Let me show you their launch video now, but make sure to stick around to after the video because I'm actually going to show you how to install it and use it right now. You can get going right away. So stick around for that. Let's watch the video. For over a hundred years, humanity has imagined a computer that's as easy to interact with as a person. ChatGPT introduced the world to this technology and became the fastest growing consumer application of all time. Now, corporations around the world have started building closed source, artificially intelligent devices. Six weeks ago, we realized there was an opportunity to build an open source foundation for this next generation of computers, the Linux of this space. Something open, flexible, and free. An operating system with a language model at the center of it. I'm holding the first device powered by this operating system in my hand right now. It's called the O1. This is the O1 Lite, the first open source language model computer. You talk to it like a person, and it operates a computer to help you get things done. You can run the language model on your computer at home or in our server in the cloud, making the O1 Lite fully portable when connected to Wi-Fi or a hotspot. To use it, you just push, talk, and then it thinks and responds. Let me show you what it can do. When's the next sunny day? One moment. The next sunny day is on March 9th. Great. Am I doing anything on that day? Let me check your calendar. You have no events scheduled for March 9th. So because the O1 is operating my personal computer at home, I didn't need to set up my calendar. It can just use it. Nice. Can you see if there are any concerts in Seattle on that day? Yes, you have several options. Option one, Bad Bunny will be performing at the Climate Pledge Arena. That's perfect. Can you add that to my calendar and then copy and paste a link to the ticket into the calendar event? And then actually, if you could text page the link and say something like, hey, do you want to go to this? Concert is on your calendar and page has been texted. Awesome, thanks. You're welcome. By the way, you've just received an email from Mike asking about your progress on an article. Would you like to respond to it now? So I need to send that file to Mike, but it's on my computer at home. Hey, that article should be on my desktop. It's called the Universal Interface. There's a file titled the Universal Interface.pdf on your desktop. Do you want me to send it to Mike? Now, at this point, I could ask my light to read or even edit that document, but I'm just gonna send it to Mike. Yes, please send it. The document has been emailed to Mike. Great. So you can kind of think of the O1 light as like a smart person that's in front of your computer. How could that be useful? Let's head back now and I'll show you something even bigger. This is my laptop and it's the one that the light has been operating. Out of the box, it's pretty good at using my computer, but it can't do everything. So let's teach it to use a desktop application that it's never seen. 
Hey, I want to teach you something. Sounds good. What do you want to teach me to do? I'm going to show you how to send a Slack message. Okay, I'm ready. What's the first step? First, open Slack. It looks like Slack is open. Did I do that right? Yeah, you did. Great, what's next? Hit Command K. Done. Did I do that correctly? Yeah, that worked. Okay, now type out the name of the recipient, like, for example, Ty, then press Enter. Done. Let me know if I did that right. Yes, you did. Now, I want you to click on the text box at the bottom that says Message Ty. I've clicked the text box. Did I do that right? Yeah, you did. Okay, now you can write the message. For example, hey Ty, then press Enter. It looks like I've sent the message, is that right? Yes, and that's all there is to this skill, so you can save it now. Sure thing. I've just learned the skill send a Slack message. So you can do this with any workflow, any desktop application, or even a pipeline of applications and websites without setting up any authentication. It just uses your computer. But here's where it gets interesting. Okay, now I want you to monitor my email. If you get any invoices, could you take a look at the attachments and then Slack all the relevant details to Mike? All right, I'll monitor your inbox for invoices. If I see one, I'll Slack the details to Mike. Now, days later, when I get an invoice, which I'll test just by emailing one of myself, it will slack it to Mike and let me know about it. I just sent a Slack message to Mike with the basic information of the invoice. That was the O1 Lite. You can pre-order one today for $99, and the one you get won't require a computer. You'll be able to use it as a standalone device that taps into our hosted service. But developers can get their hands on this right now. We are releasing the O1 Lite, the O1 Server, and the O1 OS developer previews today. The software, CAD files, wiring diagrams, everything you need to make an O1 light in an afternoon so you can build your own personal or commercial AI devices tomorrow. I want you to imagine a world with doctors that fit in your pocket, smart toys that talk and teach, companions, Pokédexes, and robots, all running in an open ecosystem with shared protocols and innovations the Cambrian explosion of AI devices. In the next few weeks, we're going to release an open source language model for computer control, an app for your phone, and a handheld device that runs fully offline. If you want to build this future together, talk to me and thousands of other energized developers in our rapidly growing O1 community. Let's accelerate together. I'll see you there. Okay, now let me show you how to install it and you can use it right away. So there's two projects and one builds on top of the other. There's Open Interpreter, which is the core project that allows you to control your computer using natural language. And then there's the O1 OS project that really just puts a voice interface between you and Open Interpreter. Now, I haven't actually been able to get O1 OS working. I think it has something to do with my computer. I'm still working on it. I actually spent a few hours trying to do it, but I couldn't do it. 
it. But all it really gives you is the voice interface piece. And we can accomplish everything else with Open Interpreter, which I'm gonna show you right now. Okay, so what we're gonna need is Conda. And if you don't already have Conda installed, just Google it, it's pretty easy to install and it just allows you to manage your Python versions and Python packages. So what we're gonna do is Conda create dash N O I for Open Interpreter, Python equals 3.9 and then hit enter. Now I already have one and it's gonna ask me if I wanna remove the existing environment, which I don't, but you go ahead and install it just like that. Once you have that all installed, you're gonna type Conda activate OI then hit enter. And you could tell the Conda environment is activated because it says so right there. Next, you're just gonna type pip install open dash interpreter and then hit enter. So I already have all this installed, so that's why it says requirement already satisfied. But if you don't, it'll actually go ahead and install it. Next, you just type interpreter and that's it and hit enter and it'll spin up. It'll ask you for your GPT-4 key and you can use other LLMs if you want, but GPT-4 is obviously the easiest. So when you load it up for the first time, it's going to ask you for your GPT-4 key. So you're gonna to come to platform.openai.com slash API dash keys. You're gonna create a new secret key. You're gonna name it. So I'll say OI underscore YT. I'll say create key and then you can grab it just like that. Let me show you how cool this is. So let's start with something simple. What folders do I have on my desktop? And any commands, it is going to show you before running. So you just type yes. And there we go, there are all the folders on the desktop. And remember, now we have the ability to do pretty much anything on the desktop. So coming back here, I have Chrome open. Now, let me just open up a new tab. And you can imagine here, I can just say it. Hey, open up a new tab in Chrome for me. But for now, I'm just gonna type it out. So I just type open a new tab in Chrome. Okay, would you like to run it? Yes, and there it goes. It opened a new tab in Chrome for me, that easy. So let's try this, something pretty complicated. Open Gmail and Chrome and tell me if I have a new email in the last 30 minutes. Okay, and there, it's like its own scripting language. It's so cool. So here we go, let's go. Okay, it opened up Gmail for me. It's looking at it and let's go back now. Okay, so it has a bunch of commands, computer.mail.get and it's gonna continue. It wrote a little script. Do you wanna run this code? Yes. Let's see what it does. Okay, so it ran into an error. So I'm gonna try something more complicated. Open Twitter and tell me what the latest tweet in my timeline is. Okay, so it's saying, tell application Google Chrome, set URL of active tab to the first window, twitter.com and tell. So let's run it first. Boom, opened up Twitter perfectly. Okay, however, I'm afraid I'm unable to directly access the content of your Twitter timeline due to privacy concerns. All right, so there's obviously still a lot of debugging to do, but it's still very, very impressive. You can play around with Open interpreter. You can power it with a local model if you want even. So play around with it. Let me know what you think. I'm going to continue trying to get this working. And as soon as I do, I'll make another tutorial video about it. And you can pre-order the light device right now if you want. And it's $109 for the actual separate device, which seems pretty cool. And it's a developer preview right now. So again, very early, but completely open source, which I absolutely love. And the 109 includes shipping. And this is almost certainly the future of computing where you're just speaking directly to a device that doesn't necessarily even need to have a screen. And it's either controlling the operating system on the device, controlling an operating system somewhere else. And then eventually kind of the step after that that, it's just natural language to large language model to compute, direct execution on a device. Very, very cool, very futuristic, and I'm all for it. So I'm definitely gonna be testing out my Rabbit R1 device. I definitely wanna get this and I wanna test this out. I wanna get this working. So I'm gonna spend even more time doing that. And as soon as I do, I'll let you know. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.